Hey there, Sarah here from Your Creative Junction, and I am super excited to share with you a new DIY crafting. Um, so let's jump in and get right started. So before we get too far in today's project, please, if you enjoy today's video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up to let me know that you liked today's content and uh, hit the notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you will get a notification that something new has been loaded. Um, so let's jump in. Quick Pinterest search for farmhouse decor or tiered tray decor will show you all sorts of beaded garlands. Um, they are incredibly popular and I am here to show you today just how easy you can make your own. All of the supplies that we are using today will be linked down below in the description box. And if you liked this project, you can pick up some of these things yourself and make your own set of farmhouse beads. So for today's project, I will be using uh, some acrylic craft paint that I pick up at the dollar store, a variety of different wooden beads um, in different sizes and colors that I get at um, my Amazon store, a um, wooden tag that was cut on a uh, Glowforge laser printer or sorry, laser cutter and some reusable silkscreen transfers for some design. I might use this um, found button. I'm also gonna use some parchment paper just to keep things neat and tidy. And we're gonna use some twine. There's some in here, and we're also gonna use some uh, baker's twine to make the tassel. So let's get started. So the first step in our process is to paint some of our beads. And I've seen this done several different ways, but my um, most favorite and easy way is to take a handful of beads that I want painted. Um, I like to do it this way so that I get a variety and I'm just gonna toss them in a plastic bag and I'm gonna go ahead and squirt out some of my paint into this bag. So then I throw my um, zip up the Ziploc and then just um, do this. <laughs> I don't know what the technical term is for this, but squish around your um, beads inside of your plastic bag so that they get all covered in paint. And that way my fingers stay nice and clean. So then the next thing I do is I dump them out into a little container um, like this. Whoops, I got my fingers dirty. Um, I just pour them out into a little container like this and I let them dry. Now, if I'm in a rush, I will use my hair dryer to dry these up or um, I like to try and do them a day ahead so that they are done and all ready for me. I do like to get all of my painting done before I move on to um, threading my beads just because then all of my wet painting is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this little wooden tag that I've had for quite some time. I had a bunch of things um, laser cut by another crafter <clears throat> who has a, a Glowforge. I do not have one, but it is on my wish list. Um, so anyway, she had done these for me a while ago and I had them um, laying in my craft um, my stash. Um, and I thought this would be a great place to use them on the end of these farmhouse beads. I really like it when there's a tag of some sort on the end. And, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do with this. I am painting this in the color wrought iron, and this is by a folk art brand. And I picked this up either at Amazon or at Michael's if I have a coupon.
So next step I'm going to do is um, using this Baker's Twine that I got um, off of Amazon, um, but you can get it um, at the Dollar Tree or Dollarama. Just keep your eyes out for it. It comes in a variety of different colors. I'm going to use it with just a scrap piece of um, cardboard. I keep this one because I find this is the perfect length for my tassels. Um, let me tell you how big it is. So we are, we are five inches long this way and we are four inches uh, tall. So um, my tassel is going to be four inches um, when I'm done. And basically all I'm going to do, I start the end down here at the end because that's going to be the end of my tassel. And then I'm just going to wrap it. I'm just going to Make sure that stays straight, but really that's all you have to do is wrap it. You don't have to wrap it super tight um, because you want to be able to get it off of your cardboard, but just go ahead and keep wrapping until you get a tassel that's as full as you want it to be. Um, everybody has a preference. Um, I'm going to count here and I will tell you how many times I've gone around just for reference so you know um, if you want to make yours to look like mine and then I can tell you how many times I went around the cardboard. So let's just see. Okay, so for reference, I went around 25 times. And just like I started with my end down here, I'm going to end with my end down here as well so that that's the um, bottom of my tassel. And I am just going to give that a little snip. Um, sometimes I have to give my uh, tassels a little bit of a haircut, and I'll show you that at the end. Um, they just all don't always cut up evenly. So, But for now, I'm just going to leave that sit, and I'm going to grab my other twine. So my little box of beads came with this really thin, it's really quite stiff, um, jute twine. And I actually really like it for um, putting my beads together. Um, one, you're not going to be like all of your beads are going to be on this. So I find because it's smooth, it's a lot easier to um, string my beads onto it. So that's the one I like to use. But I've also used the Baker's Twine and I've used other kinds of um, jute from the dollar store. So just use whatever you have or whatever you like. So I just take off some. <laughs> I always give myself like a generous amount um, because I can, I can always trim it afterwards. I'd rather have too much than not enough and I do a double so I have two pieces here uh, line up the ends and I'm going to put my tag on first even though I haven't um, put my little design on it yet I am going to put it on my okay so I'm not entirely sure what happened to that last little clip but it ended too soon and you didn't get to see me putting the tag on so you basically just loop the um, twine through the end and um, pull it back through itself so that it is attached to the end of your tag. Um, what you're seeing me here do here is um, I wanted to sand a little bit of the paint off of all of my beads and some of them ended up with a little um, a little bit too much paint on them. So I took a moment with some sandpaper and just sanded off the excess and got it to where I wanted them to be so that they were all ready to loop onto my farmhouse bead garland. Okay, so we are ready to go. I think what happened with these black ones was there was these big chunks of paint. You'd see it all over my fingers. I think there must have been a, um, you know how you get globs in your paint? It just starts to dry. I think that's what happened. So a lot of those black ones needed a fair amount of sanding and I had to pick off some of that um that extra paint. I have never had that happen before. So it had to have been something in the paint jar that dried. So now we're ready. Let's get started to string our beads. And there is no right way or wrong way to do this. You go ahead and make a pattern that works for you. And I just string on um, all of my beads 
in whatever pattern I like. So I mix up the colors. If you like a specific pattern, you can go ahead and do that. Um, or you can just make it completely random and get all of your beads on. This one has no holes. Look at that. <laughs> that one's not going to work. Neither does that one. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I did not notice that ahead of time that those didn't even have holes. They all came out of the same bag. That's too funny. So you can lay it out like this and then find a pattern that loves that you love. I am also going to throw on some natural ones as well, I think. So I'm just going to play with it and we'll see what happens. So. My beads are all strung and I've just left the twine long for now. These are, this is as long as I'd like it to be. You make yours as long as you want them to be. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some decoration here on my little tag. And because this is fresh paint um, that we just did and it's wood, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of wax on it. Um, just a little bit I don't need a ton um, but I would like to protect my surface so that it is ready to accept some chalk paste and my um, my sticky reusable silkscreen transfer I don't want it to get too stuck that it won't come off of there so just a light coat of wax um, and I actually think I'm gonna coat I'm gonna do both sides just in case I decide to um, chalk on both sides I might do that you never know um, that way I don't have to get the wax out again. So just a light little um, coat. You don't want it to feel sticky. You just want to wax it on and buff it off so that it feels smooth to the touch, not sticky at all. And the other thing is, is that it t definitely t changes the sheen of your wood. So you want to make sure that it's even throughout. Um, and it looks the way you want it to do and you're ready to put some decoration on there. So I have just placed my um, reusable silk screen transfer upside down and I'm placing my tag right over top of the words that I want to chalk on here um, just because I find it easier to make sure that the placement is correct. So I'm going to put on one side, I'm going to put honey, be yourself and I'm going to do that in um, yellow and white. Um, chalk paste. Um, and if you are wondering where I get my supplies from, the um, link is in the description box down below. Um, and you can get uh, these reusable silkscreen transfers for yourself um, and create your own projects just as easy as I am doing right now. Scrape on a little bit of paste and then squeegee off the excess just like that and I'm gonna just do this the word B in this bright bright yellow because I want to tie all of my colors together so just scrape off the excess using my squeegee and we'll peel that off and the design will be left behind oh so stinking cute so I am going to go ahead and dry. So all dry only takes but a minute and then it is almost indestructible, honestly. Um, it is the best form of crafting I have found. I absolutely love it. I am gonna put this cute little bee on the other side. I'm gonna do both sides um, because this is going on my tray and um, you just never know, things get flipped around and I do like to have it, um, I do like most of my decor to be double-sided. So I'm gonna put this bee on here. This is our new bee um, and I just love its detail and I have put it crooked. Uh oh, I'm going to have to wash that off. Let me show you how. 
So honestly, mistakes happen um, when you're crafting. I always say perfection does not exist. This is still wet. I have waxed my wood, so it's going to be relatively easy to get off. I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water and wipe it off with my um, eraser here. And you'll see that chalk paste will just completely disappear. And I can start again. Voila, I'll just dry it and we'll be ready to go. So I went ahead and washed my transfer and if you want to know how I did that, I will link a um, video right here in the cards for you um, because you're washing your transfers is, is pretty easy as well. Um, so I went ahead and washed it and I dried it and I think what happened was it could be a combination of things. Perhaps I didn't have it stuck down enough so I'm taking some extra time here to make sure that all of those pieces are really well stuck. And the other thing is I could have put too much pressure um, when I was dragging my um, chalk paste across. So you really do not need to put any pressure at all. Just drag that chalk paste across just like that. And we'll see if it worked this time. Much better. I was just in a rush. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little button embellishment on here. I always like to do a little embellishing and I like to do these simple, simple bows with this twine. Um, I don't know. I just like them. They're super simple and easy to do. Just your rabbit ears and pull it through. Um, and you just get this little simple bow and the loops lay flat and I can tighten it up and make it as big or as little as I want. And then I'm just gonna attach it with some hot glue right on top of my little tag, just to give us a little bit more of embellishment and dimension here. And yeah, it's gonna be super cute. So that's all set and ready to go. And now it's time to attach our beads to our tassel, which has been sitting over here. So I always just make sure that my ends that I had talked about are still headed in the right direction. And I'm going to slip this off of the cardboard, which is always easier said than done. So as you pull it off of the cardboard, keep all of these loops together. I like to put them around my thumb like that. And this is the end that we're gonna cut eventually because that's where our two ends were. So as this is around my thumb, I'm gonna take my twine that was here and I'm gonna go through my loop with my twine. And that's how I'm gonna attach them. So I'm gonna put my loop of my tassel through or sorry the loop uh, sorry the twine of my beads let's get this straight through the loop of my tassel and then I'm gonna leave a little bit of space like that so like probably a thumb width and I'm going to come down and wrap it around here
pull my finger out now because it's good and tight. Just sort of manipulate it so that it stays where you want it to and you can get it pulled nice and tight just like that. And you can go around as many times as you like. Let's back it off a little bit so I can get it tight. I want it, I've got a couple of loose ones there I don't want. There we go, tighten it up. And go around as many times as you like. And then what I like to do is I bring a loop around, I put my finger back in and I bring my loop around and then I tie it in a bit of a knot so that it's tied right onto the tassel. It does not have to look perfect. You just want to knot so that it's not going to start to fray on you. Get those all in place and then tie that into a little knot. There we go. It might actually go a second knot. We go like that. So there you have it, just like that. Now, the one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna put a dab of hot glue on this just to make sure that it doesn't gonna, it isn't gonna come loose. So I'll throw a little bit of glue in there, just a little bit so that my ends are actually inside of that hot glue. When it is dry, I will trim that. So we are all tied up in knots there and glued. The glue is dry. I'm just gonna trim that right to the edge, cut that off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and find the ends of my loops here and give those a trim so that it becomes that tassel. Make sure I got them all. I always miss at least one. <sighs> and I did this time as well. So then your little tassel just hangs like that. And look at that, this time I don't even actually need to give it a haircut. It is perfectly level, amazing. <laughs> So there's how easy that is to make your own set of farmhouse beads with a tassel just with supplies that you have laying around the house or things that you can pick up at the dollar store. So there you have it. Our own farmhouse beads is an excellent addition to our tier tray that we are building. This is a bit of a series of videos that I am going to be doing with you, um, showing you how to build your own tier tiered tray decor pieces um, on a budget, DIY, and super quick and super easy. So I hope you will follow along. If you have liked this video, please make sure you smash that thumbs up button. That helps us so much. Also, please leave a comment. Let us know what you thought and let us know what other theme should we do for our tiered tray um, series. We would like to keep this going all year long. And yeah, let me know what other themes do you think we should uh, do some research on and find some projects to do for. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to um, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to share this video with a crafty friend. I'm sure there's someone out there that you know who would like to learn all about how to make their own DIY home decor as well. Thanks so much. Take care and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.